We are at the Proctor Valley Vernal Pool Restoration Project. It's a project of the Chaparral Lands Conservancy. And where we're located is just east of the subdivisions in eastern Chula Vista in South San Diego County and west of the rural community of Pamul. Proctor Valley is a fairly remote, undeveloped valley. Some development may happen in the future, but most of the valley has been protected uh, to protect City of San Diego reservoirs downstream, the Otay Lakes, and uh, lots of endangered species and habitats protections on the Rancho Hamul Ecological Reserve, among other areas. The land that we're standing on is owned by the City of San Diego Public Utilities Department. And this was an area that uh, Proctor Valley for years, back in the 1990s, was sort of lawless. Uh, if you had a construction project and you wanted to dump your trash illegally, uh, people came here and dumped their trash. Uh, so a lot of damage was done. In fact, we tracked satellite images of the site and found that most of the damage initially at the site was done in just a six month period. Uh, Off-road vehicle riding was rampant. Uh, on weekends there would be hundreds of riders out here on motorcycles and quads running amok. Uh, same thing with pickup trucks. And even to this day, you know, when it rains, you see people driving down the road looking for places to drive their Jeeps. So unfortunately, this site that has these incredibly rare and special vernal pool wetlands uh, was also picked by the off-road vehicle enthusiasts as a place to ride, probably in part because there was these neat mud holes. And uh, unfortunately, those mud holes, of course, are the vernal pools, and uh, they have lots of endangered species and sensitive issues. Today's kind of an exciting day because we're finally to the point after years of preparation, years of permitting, planning, getting the restoration project ready, actually to the point where we're planting native plants. We're getting things in the ground. And we're here with uh, one of our contractors today, Helix Environmental, and uh, Larry Sward, who's gonna be walking us through some of the details of the restoration project. Larry, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about some of the things that are going on behind us today. What are the workers up to here? What we've done is we have uh, collected seeds and cuttings from the site, and we've taken them to the nursery and propagated them and grown them into one gallon container stock. And now our construction crews are planting them in the upland areas around the vernal pools. What are some of the things that had to take place here before the planting happened? There's, there's years of work before we even get to this point. In the uh, initial going, the primary focus was modifying the topography to enhance uh, vernal pool habitat, the, which means we wanted these basins to hold water following uh, seasonal rains. And then uh, it, part of that, you know, the, the excavation from that has to go somewhere. And so we kind of mounted that up in the uplands. And that's uh, the primary area where we are now planting. What are some of the challenges uh, associated with the restoration project like this? I mean, if this goes on over three years, you know, what are the easy things? What are the, some of the hard elements of the project? Well, when it comes to challenges in doing habitat restoration, I like to think of it in terms of the art and science of restoration. Now, if the, the thing is, is that the environment is so complex that we are not at a point in our understanding of science that we can get a handle on all those variables. We can get a handle on some of them, but not all of them. And, and so what happens in order to do effective habitat restoration, it enters into what I call art. And that's where you don't have you know, you can't write an equation, you can't uh, point to a graph, but this is how it's gonna go, and where you have to kind of use your experience and your it intuition to design what it is you're doing. There are two sides to the Vernal Pool Restoration Project in Proctor Valley. One side that we've looked at has more extensive uh, impacts from off-road vehicles, where most of the site has been denuded of native vegetation. The other side of Proctor Valley Road is the other half of the project, and it has been less impacted over the entire site, but some of the vernal pools have been more impacted directly. This pool right behind me uh, has classic signs of a, a truck having gotten stuck in the pool. Those are tire ruts. Um, Larry, what, what would be done with this pool? How did we fix conditions in the pools on the other side that were like this? We had one pool on, on our side of the road, pool number 11, that had, uh, was heavily impacted by tire ruts. And what, that, what happens is that it kind of over steepens the sides, kind of the wheels go here, the sides are like that, and you get this hump in the middle. And so what we do with that is we lay the sides back and take the hump out and try to uh, reestablish a more gentle grade all the way around the pool. So you're just, in the end of the day, uh, just making a more natural appearing pool. We make a more natural appearing pool. 
One of the key things that we've learned from the Proctor Valley Vernal Pool Restoration Project is just how easy it is to destroy these very sensitive natural habitats with off-road vehicles, for example, and how hard and expensive it can be to restore these habitats to the way they should be. And that's why what we're really striving for is to start the process in the right direction. Plant things, uh, restore the topography, make sure things are, are, are just started in the right direction so that nature can take over and uh, begin the healing process uh, that we began with the restoration project.